Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Today we want to compare the DJI Phantom 3 Professional with the DJI Phantom 4. Let's go for this epic fight right now. Don't forget to leave a thumb up, don't forget to subscribe and enjoy the episode. Stay tuned. <laughs> Out of words. <laughs> Let's get started. The Phantom 3 and Phantom 4 look a little different, even though a clear family resemblance doesn't go without notice. The Phantom 4 has a white glossy shell, while the Phantom 3 offers the classical dull look with the typical DJI stripes on the arms. Both UAV are almost the same size and the weight varies by only a few grams. The P3 weighs 1280 grams, while the new P4 weighs 100 grams more, which makes 1380 grams in total. The redesigned gimbal of the Phantom 4 is an eye-catcher. We immediately notice that the largest part of the gimbal is hidden within the body of the Phantom 4, while on the Phantom 3 the gimbal was placed outside the body. The Phantom 4's gimbal is not only more aerodynamic, but it's a lot better protected. The only con about it is that it seems to be way harder to repair a broken gimbal now that the gimbal is hidden inside the copter and you would have to open it up. Next to the protection part, DJI has moved the USB connector and micro SD card reader to the side of the Phantom. Another big advantage of the new Phantom 4 is that the camera is held on two sides. Not only does it look more stable, but DJI fixed the tilted horizon problem and the camera seems to be even more resistant against movement when testing it in the field. The new gimbal feels a lot more solid. The new camera looks as unobtrusive as the old one. The specs won't promise any new features and at first sight it doesn't look like an upgrade. Both cameras work on the same sized sensor, they both have a maximum photo resolution of 12 megapixels, the 20mm lens offers a 94 degrees field of view, the aperture is still fixed at 2.8 and the data rate has not been improved. Let's now take a look at the improvements though. When filming in Full HD, DJI increased the maximum frame rate to 120 frames per second over only 60 frames per second on the Phantom 3. Nice to have, but not a game changer. So what else have they done? They have changed some minor details that will make every film production look a lot better. They corrected the lens to reduce the amount of chromatic aberration, images seem to be visibly sharper and lines have been straightened. Which means no more unwanted distortion. No more wobbly horizons. DJI moves away from an action camera look again, which is an absolute advantage. And now the P4 is way ahead of the Phantom 3 camera even. How about night filming? The Phantom 4 is the clear winner over the Phantom 3 again. Next to the improved lens, DJI added a 3D noise reduction tool to lower the amount of disturbing noise in higher ISO situations. Summarizing one could say, even though from the tech spec side the new camera doesn't seem to be a lot better, it clearly is the winner due to the small but minor fixes. Let's move on to the motors. Before we talk about power and props, it immediately gets visible that the motors look like an extended version of the Phantom 3 motors. And yes, DJI raised the motors higher for a major reason. Let's just compare the fast forward flight on both the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4. It always drove me crazy, absolutely crazy, that the props of the Phantom 3 showed up in the image when flying forward. They ruined plenty shots of mine and I was absolutely unhappy with that. Finally, we can now get rid of that. As you can see, the Phantom 4's propellers do not show up anymore. No more trouble with that problem. Thank God and as a filmmaker, I can only say that changing the height of the props is another major advantage of the Phantom 4 and would be one of the reasons why I would decide to buy a Phantom 4 over a Phantom 3. Next to that, the Phantom 4 comes with stronger motors and a lot more power. Only think of the new sport mode, where the Phantom 3 can fly with a maximum speed of 16 meters per second, the Phantom 4 can fly at speeds up to 20 meters per second, which means it can fly at speeds up to 72 kilometers per hour. mode really rocks up to 22 meters per second that is so freaky I didn't think I was gonna love it that much but it's incredible I would buy the Phantom 4 only for that sport mode it's really a complete different experience
and due to the power of the new motors, DJI enhanced the Phantom's brakes. And to eliminate the problem of self-off spinning propellers, DJI Phantom 4 users now have to use quick release props and they are a lot safer, easier to install and to remove. And finally, it's another comfort and safety advantage. No more screwing, no more wasting of time. Let's move on to another big change. The Phantom 4 comes equipped with an anti-collision system. Two cameras at the front and two at the bottom deliver real-time 3D obstacle sensing, which means less crashes. The system has a range of 0.7 till 15 meters and works quite well, even though no one should fully rely on to it. Most of the time, the system works out great, but smaller branches or power lines are not detectable at all times. Next to that, the system only works with enough surrounding light which means that nighttime flights cannot benefit from the new system. The major con about the new system is another one though. While the Matrice 100 has sensors all around its body, the Phantom's anti-collision system only works in forward flight. There are no sensors at the side or back of the copter. But nevertheless, an anti-collision system is something really nice to have. Maybe DJI releases the Phantom 5 in 2017 with a 360 degrees anti-collision system. Who knows that by now? Talking about sensors, let's see what we got at the Phantom's bottoms. While the Phantom 3 Professional comes with a single BPS unit, DJI doubled that with the Phantom 4. Two sensors help the operator until a crazily maximum height of 10 meters. And while others say that the strengthened VPS isn't such a great thing, let me note that I'm absolutely in love with it. Take a look at this shot where I let both Phantoms hover next to each other while the Phantom 4 stays rock solid in air. The Phantom 3 jumps up and down, flies slightly forwards and backwards and looks somewhat like an, I don't know, ADHD patient almost. Excuse me, but when it comes to stability, let me say that the update from the Phantom 3 to the Phantom 4 feels just as great as the update from the Phantom 2 to the Phantom 3 last year. Even though that was unexpected, I definitely want to add the stability of the Phantom 4 to the list of the major enhancements. Let's now talk about the batteries and flight time a bit. The batteries look very different. The Phantom 3's batteries weigh around 360 gram and the Phantom 4's battery weigh around 460 gram. While removing the old Phantom 3 batteries was always a little annoying, especially when trying to remove them with cold hands, the Phantom 4's battery makes the handling easier. Push and remove, it's as simple as that. DJI moved the connector for the power cable to the bottom while it was situated at the side at the Phantom 3. And there is no wrong or right way to connect the power cable, it fits in both ways. But let's now throw a look at the power capacity. The Phantom 3's battery stores around 4480 milliamp hours, while the Phantom 4's battery store around 5350 milliamp hours and are a lot stronger. Let's take a look at how long it takes to charge them and which one is actually faster. Let's not forget that the Phantom 3's battery should be a little faster due to the lower total capacity, but we'll see what happens. Let me slow the video down right here. At 59.05, the Phantom 3's battery is fully charged. Let's speed up again and see how much longer the Phantom 4's battery needs. Only a few minutes later, at 1 hour, 2 minutes and 8 seconds, the Phantom 4's battery is fully charged as well. Both charge very fast, a lot faster than the Phantom 3 Standard or Advanced for example. And the Phantom 3 Professional is a little faster than the Phantom 4, again due to its lower total power capacity. There is no winner and no loser, both are charging very, very fast. Okay guys, let's right now take the promised flight time to the test. 23 promised flight minutes with the Phantom 3 Professional versus 28 promised flight minutes with the new Phantom 4. Let's just see who wins that battle and let's get started. Actually, both UAV are behaving quite nicely and I must say that the Phantom 3 today is a lot more stable than the other day. But still, uh, I did a cold IMU calibration before both flights, this one and the last one where I tested the stability. And um, 
yeah, I must say, now the Phantom 3 is behaving a lot better, but still the Phantom 4 is the winner. When it comes to flight stability, you can still see it. The Phantom 4 hovers quite nicely. It's rock solid, while the Phantom 3 is a little wobbly. But let's just continue that easy flight. Okay guys, after they both auto landed, one can say that both can't keep up the promised flight time, not even during normal hovering on a normal day. It's a little windy only. Well, this one can't keep up to 23 minutes and this one cannot keep up to 28 promised flight minutes, but still the Phantom 4 offers us around two minutes more and I think every single minute counts, but still it wasn't really honest. Let's just say I tested that quite a few times and always had about one to three minutes more and we had five minutes promised more by DJI and well, I, would, I don't want to say it was a lie, but just it's not correct. One till three minutes more flight time with the Phantom 4 over the Phantom 3 Professional. But still, I think the Phantom 4 is the winner when it comes to that um, because I think every single minute counts. Inside the copter, DJI has applied another major change, another goal for flight safety that I'm personally very happy about. While the Phantom 3 comes equipped with a single IMU and a single compass, the Phantom 4 comes with two IMU units and two compasses. This will result in less flyaways and less crashes caused by system failure. If we now take a look at the remote controller, we can see that the Phantom 3's remote controller features the P, A and F mode. And the Phantom 4's controller features the P, S and A mode instead. It's not a big deal, but interesting to know that the function mode of the Phantom 3 was moved inside the DJI GO app. So it's not available on the remote controller anymore, while on the Phantom 4 they have added the sport mode. DJI replaced the old playback button with a pause button that you can always hit during a flight to let the Phantom hover in air and to interrupt the mission. Some difficult or dangerous situations could be cleared with that in future for sure. Finally, DJI replaced the plastic mobile device holder with a stronger aluminum version that we know from the Inspire One's controller. More stability is the result, nice to have, but not a major change though. Let's now compare the Phantom 4's range with the range of the Phantom 3. Technically, both should be able to work until a distance of up to 5 km in FCC in North America and up to 3.5 km in CE mode in Europe. I've tested it several times and under different circumstances. The selected clips do not show the maximum range achieved, but an average value only. Note that you can see the Phantom 4's propellers a little bit from time to time and next to that you can see that the Phantom 4 flies constantly slower than the Phantom 3 in normal mode at maximum acceleration. Contrary to expectations, the Phantom 3 was always ahead of the new Phantom 4. The Phantom 3 was always able to fly a few hundred meters further than the Phantom 4. But we should note that flying out of sight is not recommended for safety reasons and that for filmmaking purposes you usually won't need to fly away that far. Finally, DJI added two new flight modes to the Phantom 4. Tap fly at first allows you to tap at an object, then select go and the Phantom makes its way there completely on its own. And as you can see it flies towards the selected target in a straight line and it even changes the height automatically, which is pretty fantastic. Now take a look at the obstacle sensing system in action. It automatically navigates the Phantom above the trees instead of flying it right into them and crashing because my selected target was behind those trees. What a fantastic tool. Next let me show you active track. Drag a box around a person or object that you want to follow. A green box pops up, tap at go and the Phantom automatically starts following that person. You neither need a GPS tracker, nor a phone, nor a remote controller. And that's the magic and difference to all the other following modes.
I was doing nothing at all while the Phantom 4 followed her around 100% autonomously. It didn't get confused by other people walking by. It then navigated even safely around the thin branches of the tree. When turning around, the Phantom kept her in focus at all time and as soon as it raised the height a little, the movement even looked a little smoother again. Again, take a look at the obstacle sensing system as the Phantom 4 gets closer to the tree. No problem at all, no crashes, no expansive repairs. This is absolutely amazing. Filmmakers with a low budget will love ActiveTrack and no third party software on the Phantom 3 can replace the ActiveTrack function due to the missing obstacle sensors, which mean you would have to fly always a lot higher and you can't get these incredible low shots. Finally, DJI came up with an easy to put on gimbal saver that feels way better than the old one on the Phantom 3. Next to that, they have moved the ventilation openings from the top of the arms at the Phantom 3 to the bottom of the arms at the new Phantom 4, which prevents moisture from entering the body, which is quite smart and looks pretty sexy. Okay guys, summarizing, one could say that the Phantom 4 isn't the perfect machine, but it has a lot of pros to feature and those Pros, again, summarizing are, first of all, the obstacle sensors. I didn't think it was gonna be that good. And finally, I can only say it works better than I thought, even though you shouldn't fully trust into it. And um, next to that, the new VPS really adds a lot of stability to the Phantom 4, especially for indoor flying. So if you are planning on flying indoors, only go for the Phantom 4. The Phantom 4 is way better at that. Next, uh, the lens is corrected to the 120 frames per second in Full HD, uh, that the props don't show, show, show up in the image anymore. The new sport mode for the flying enthusiasts and stuff like that. And one thing that I didn't, didn't mention, uh, the cables at the Phantom's legs are protected by plastic, so entirely the gimbal as well. Everything is way better protected, the uh, double IMU, double compass, it's the safer engine finally. But there are two cons that I want to mention as well, and the first con that we want to uh, keep in mind is that the range of the Phantom 4 is a little lower than the Phantom 3's range, uh, only talking about the Phantom 3 Advanced and Phantom 3 Professional. and. Um, Still, I would stick and stay with the Phantom 4 because I think about two kilometers of range is absolutely fine and for 90% of the cases, even more for, in, in my case, as a filmmaker, I don't, I don't need that. I don't need flying five kilometers or something like that. Usually I have an object and then I circle around it or film something with it, but I don't fly, I don't know, just far away. But if you are one of the uh, uh, persons that says, oh, I need to have a machine that flies five kilometers, then you should stick with the Phantom 3 Professional or with the Inspire. And um, the other con that I want to show you is that the props of the Phantom 4 break a lot easier than the props of the Phantom 3 series. That is the Phantom 4 propeller. They always break around the middle and that is a Phantom 3 propeller, a reinforced one. And that's actually the strongest one, the black one. And the normal plastic white one for the Phantom 3 is a little stronger than the plastic one for the Phantom 4. But I think we can all live with those cons of the Phantom 4 and I still think it is the better machine, it's the more mature machine and um, I would say you should go for it if you are a flying enthusiast because the sport mode is really, it's like a different machine. You can really go for racings with it and you still have the 4K camera and stuff like that. It's pretty, pretty adorable. And next to that, as a filmmaker, I would say uh, I want the Phantom 4 over the Phantom 3. If you just say, oh, I just want to fly around my housing and I don't know, want to record some stuff, you might stay and stick with the Phantom 3 then. But I think if you are a filmmaker or if you're aiming for, I don't know, any, uh, I don't know, professional reasons, if you are aiming to create some films or stuff like that, then you should invest into the Phantom 4 and especially, of course, for the safety features. Or if you now have to buy a new Phantom 3 or new Phantom 4, you should always think of the fact that the Phantom 4 is probably going to last longer if you you are a newbie because the Phantom 4 offers a lot more safety features, which is pretty damn cool. So I love my Phantom 4 and I'm going to use that as my main machine right now. And uh, yeah, by the way, if you want to support my work without spending a dime, please don't forget to buy your Phantom 4 or Phantom 3 uh, through the link that can be found in the video description or check out tomstechtime.com slash deals. That way you can support my work. DJI gets a little less and I get something and can buy new copters to review them and show you the new functions. That is actually pretty cool. Thanks for watching. This was Tom from TDD Tom's Tech Time. Hope you liked and enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to leave a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe. 
now I need to spend some time doing something else. I it took me four days creating this 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 video and I'm done. 